Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shortly before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave us instructions to baptize and teach. He said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. With these words, he identifies the persons of the Holy Trinity as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As Christians, we have no problem identifying Jesus as God the Son. Our reading from John this morning gives us another name for the Son of God. John identifies Jesus as the Word. He tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. These words teach us that Jesus, the Son of God, is also known as the Word. The identity of Jesus as the Word is actually the first identity of the Son of God that the Bible gives us. The first chapter of Genesis is the account of creation. The account makes it very clear that God spoke the creation into existence. It tells us, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Nowhere in the creation account do we learn that God created the word by which he spoke. The word by which God created all things is, in fact, an eternal person within God. In the very first verse of Genesis, the grammar of the original Hebrew betrays a God who is one in substance and yet is more than one in some other way. The second verse of Genesis tells of the Spirit. The third verse tells us that God created by means of the Word. By the time we finish the first three verses of Genesis, we have God the Creator, God the Spirit, and God the Word. Later on in Genesis, it tells us about the promise that God made to Abraham when his name was simply Abram. It tells us, The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Now we tend to think of the phrase, The word of the Lord came, as simply a poetic way of saying that a person received information from God. What if it's more than that? What if it's an actual second member of the triune God coming to have a conversation with someone? What about the time Elijah ran for his life from Jezebel? 1 Kings tells us he came to a cave and lodged in it, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? This verse refers to the word of the Lord as he. Elijah then held a conversation with the word of the Lord. As we read the Bible, we should be aware that the word of the Lord isn't always just information that God gives to us, but from time to time, it's the very Son of God working under one of his many names, the Word. As we hear the beginning of the Gospel according to John, we hear that before anything was created, the Word was with God the Father. He was God the Son. And in the beginning, he was with God the Holy Spirit. John emphasizes the work of the Word in creation. He not only tells us that God the Creator created all things through the Word, but he also tells us that God created nothing without the Word. We heard that the Word is our life. As our life, he's our light. As our light, he conquers darkness. And then we hear the most amazing thing. The Word became flesh. And dwelt among us. The little baby in the manger is the Word, the second person of the triune God. The little baby in the manger is the Word who is one with the Father and the Holy Spirit. 
As we came to the end of today's gospel, we heard that no one can see God. Therefore, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He became flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary in order to reveal God the Father to us. As the word made flesh, we'll say after he grows into a manhood, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Today's gospel tells why it's so important that the word who is God the Son came into the flesh. The true light which gives life to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came into his own and his own people did not receive him. This is a sad commentary on the world. The world doesn't know God, nor does the world receive God. This is a sad situation ever since Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. The human beings that God created to be his best friends are corrupted by sin. They're so corrupted that they enter this world without the knowledge of God. And then as they search for God, they find false gods instead of the true God. In turn, the true God becomes the enemy, a demanding dictator for whom the best is never good enough, a terror who delights in judging and condemning. The human beings that God created to be his best friends have become his enemies. Humanity is in a constant search for a God that suits him and is in constant hiding from the true God who can save them. That's the meaning of the words. The world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. The false religions of this world capitalize on humanity's never-ending search for a God that suits them. The devil baits his traps with all kinds of ways to search for God. There's the God of good feelings, the God of good works, the God who makes sense, and many more. The one God the devil doesn't want us to know is the true God, the God who saves. Because no human being can find the true God, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The writer to the Hebrews opens his letter letter with a beautiful proclamation of the reason the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He wrote, Long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. You see, since it's impossible for us to know the true God, God must make himself known to us. He speaks to us through the word, the second person of the triune God, the Son of God. The gospel according to John opens by telling us that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. John's gospel account goes on to tell us how the word spoke to us, how the word made the Father known to us. You see, the word showed that actions speak louder than mere sounds. The word not only spoke and taught, but the word performed signs, signs that proclaimed his true identity. The word is God from eternity, the creator of all things. And at the same time, the word made the Father known in a way that's totally unexpected. Although the word is God and had the right to demand service from us, he lowered himself to serve us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us so that he could take the punishment of our sin onto himself. He dwelt among us so that he could endure the guilt and the shame we deserve for our rebellion against him. He dwelt among us so that he could carry our sin to the cross and there take away the sin of the world. Because the word became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus is a true man who died on a cross. Because the word became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus is true God whose death is more than worthy enough to satisfy the just punishment of sin. 
because the word became flesh and dwelt among us, the grave wasn't able to hold him. Instead, he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, just as we heard in today's epistle reading. And after making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Because the word became flesh and dwelt among us, one person of the triune God is also true man. Our Savior Jesus Christ is both God and man. He is the eternal word. He is the light of life. He is the Son of God. In his great love for us, he took our sin onto himself and paid the ultimate price that frees us from our sin. He gave up his life on the cross. In his power as God, he rose from the dead and gave us the promise of new life. Even now, he's preparing our eternal home for us. This all begins as the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.